welcome everyone to lecture number 12, I would say, from my mind. Um, today, bioinformatics um, gene expression analysis. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, it's always fun to talk about gene expression analysis. We do a lot of gene expression analysis in our group. Um, so it's something that I'm pretty familiar with. Um, I'm just going to give you a very cursory overview. If you want to know more about gene expression analysis, just um, put your questions in chat, or if you're watching this later on YouTube, put the questions in the comments. Um, there's a lot of things to, a lot of little edges and things like in, in gene expression analysis. Like no analysis is the same. Um, so if you're working with gene expression data and you think like, perhaps this guy could help me, let me know. So for today, um, we will be talking about gene expression, um, the questions that are coming up when you do gene expression or why you want to do gene expression in the first place. Um, I will be talking a lot about, about microarrays. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about gene expression by qPCR or gene expression by RNA sequencing. Of course, there's many different ways or actually there's three major ways to measure gene expression. Um, but I want to focus on microarrays since that's one of these techniques that I have a lot of experience with. It's not the latest and greatest or the hippest to do, but I think it's still one of the best ways to get an overview of gene expression. Um, we'll be talking about normalization techniques and why they are important and and what kind of normalization techniques normally are used in gene expression analysis. Um, and then of course statistical analysis like um, how do we test if a gene is differentially expressed, um, how do we deal with things like multiple testing, and then I want to go like a step further and show you guys what you generally do after gene expression analysis, things like gene ontology or pathway analysis. Uh, we already talked a little bit about pathway analysis when we had the metabolite lecture, I think, when we did CAG, um, but of course like gene ontology is one of these topics that um, you should always touch on when you do gene expression analysis. Um, of course it's not limited to just gene expression. Um, besides that I wanted to talk about common visualizations of gene expression data. Um, so first some kind of novel visualizations like heat maps and dendrograms. Um, I will explain to you how to more or less make a dendrogram by hand. Um, so we'll be talking about here hierarchical clustering and the different ways of doing this. And then I also wanted to show you guys some of the historical plots like the MA plot and the volcano plot. Although the volcano plot is not really a historical plot, it's more of a kind of plot that people still use nowadays. And then at the end of the lecture I will show you how you can get a bunch of free microarray data so that you don't have to ask for hundreds of thousands of euros in funding to do your own experiment but um, there's databases out there which allow you to download like tons and tons of microarray data for free. Good, Be before all of that the exam. I'm very sorry guys but the exam is coming so it should be in Agnes. Um, so if anyone already registered, um, then please let me know if it worked. And if someone has access, then um, see if it's in Agnes. Um, I think I have 10 spots reserved. I think that that should be enough for all of the people. Xanakin says, yes, it's there. All right, very good, already registered. Good, so then you took one of the 10 available spots. Um, if we get more than 10 people signing up, right, if you try to register, but it says like, no, this date is already full, um, send me an email as soon as possible. Good, so it's there. So yeah, um, study hard. Um, I, I have to do the exam orally. So I'm still a little bit unsure if I will do it in person or if I will invite you guys via Zoom. Um, but um, that's that's for me. It's relatively egal. Like I can I can sit in my office and you can sit three meters away. Um, yeah, because of Omicron, which is much more contagious. So we just up the distance a little bit and then I can just ask you some questions, answer all questions correctly and you get a one. Um, don't answer any questions and you get a five or a six. I don't, I don't know how the German system works, but something like that. So um, yeah, register now and the exam will be on the 17th at 2 p.m. 
Um, if anyone has a scheduling conflict, right, if you're not available on the 17th at 2 p.m., also send me an email so that I can figure out how to do this. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go to the solutions of the previous assignments. Um, so actually, I looked into the assignments and I saw that I gave you a wrong link. I'm very sorry for that. It turned out that the link that I gave you guys for Cluster W was old. I hope everyone was able to just Google Cluster W and click on the first Google link. Um, but that was uh, that was a little bit silly of me that I didn't check the link in the uh, in the document that I gave you guys. I'm very sorry about that, uh, but I hope everyone was still able to do the assignments. All right, so the assignments for lecture 11 begin with using cluster W. Um, so had the idea was to go to the website that does cluster W. Uh, I gave you a bunch of sequences at the end of the document, and the question was. Um, Question number one is, uh, to which sequence is our query sequence most related? Um, so let's um, show you guys a Firefox window. I think I already have cluster W open. Yes, I do. Um, so I'm, I'm just using one from genome.jp, which is in Japan. Um, the old link was in Europe, but that's not available anymore, like I told you guys. All right, so um, first not fiddle with the options and use the default settings, upload the sequences from the additional section below and run the analysis. This will only take a few moments to complete. So I hope that again, this will be, um, that this will be the case, right? Uh, you never know with free databases. Um, so these were the sequences, like there was a, a query sequence, then a beta lactamase precursor, um, a beta lactamase from bacillus, and a beta lactamase from another bacteria, and then a dehydrase. Um, so these are, of course, genes. Um, here, there's actually a space missing, so let me fill that in, and let me put a space for query as well, and write it with a capital letter. Um, and then I'm just going to say execute multiple alignment, right? Not fiddle with the settings, just see what happens when we just run it using the um, using the standard settings. All right, so it's um, it seems to be running. Oh, it already finished. That's that's really really quick, actually. All right, so here we see the, uh, the, the, the the output from cluster W, right? So it says first that, okay, I detected that you are trying to do multiple alignment of proteins, um, and then format is Pearson, that's not correct. The format is actually FASTA, but that should be okay. Um, it lists the amino acids just to make sure that it understood what you gave it, and then it starts aligning the sequences pairwise, right? So the first step in, in any multiple sequence alignment is to pairwise alignment of the individual sequences, and then it creates uh, something called a guide tree, which you can actually uh, click on. Um, so if we would click on that, it would try to download it, and then I'm just going to open this with note pet plus plus um, for some reason that's not the default um, why is that not the default all right so do that and then okay so that just gives me a single sequence alignment that's not what I wanted why is this window so weird actually good but and so it does pairwise sequence alignment you can uh, you can download the guide tree, um, and then the guide tree will more or less grow, show you an overview of how the sequences are related, which it does like this. Um, of course, this is a, um, um, a guide tree in a way that a computer can understand. So here we see the query, um, and then we see that the query is closest related to bacilli uh, the beta lactamase from uh, bacillus, and then less. But had these arrows here, they de denote like branching in the tree. Um, but it's not a pretty, it's not a perfect format. All right, so let's go back to Firefox, then here we can actually see the alignments. So the alignments can also be downloaded in a file. Let me actually do that as well. When I do that, then I can open it up with Notepad. And then, hey, of course, we just get in Notepad the alignments that we have, right? So it's it's just the, the multiple sequence alignment. Good. So, question number one was to which sequence is it most related? Um, I think um, it can actually show you the tree, but that will take a little bit of additional time. Um, but uh, it, it, then it will give you a tree which looks like a tree, right? 
Um, but here we see that uh, when we look at the sequence, we can see that it hey, kind of orders them based on the, the distance between the sequences. And we can see that our query sequence is most related to the beta lactamase 2 of Bacillus. Um, and then there's uh, another sequence which is relatively closer, closer related. Ah, here we have it. Good. So here we have our query sequence, beta lactamase Bacillus, and then the beta lactamase from um, Bacteriolus. Right, so if, if this query sequence would be an unknown sequence to us, um, then especially based on this tree, we would say, oh, this is probably a beta lactamase 2 gene. All right, so first question answered. Second question is, um, how, many amino, um, how many amino acids are identical between all sequences? Right, so identical between all sequences means that we're looking for the stars right in the multiple sequence alignment because a star means that they are exactly identical so fortunately i downloaded the alignment in uh, yeah so i i hope i'm live again uh because for um some reason my entire obs just crashed like hard it it just froze up and and didn't let me do anything um is everything okay? I'm still getting some lag on the webcam and I think on my voice as well, but um, that's that's not good. Not good at all. What the hell is this thing doing? Uh, I hate when this happens. I hate when this happens. Nova Vego, thank you for subbing or thank you for following actually while the whole stream is crashing, going picture in picture, and uh, um, so actually, let me see if I can uh, figure this out. All right, that looks better, right? So people can see me again. Can people hear me as well? I think so. I hope it's not too too weird. I'm getting like weird. Have you tried turning it off on and off again? Yeah, I did. I, I had to force quit it. Okay, so my moderator sees me and hears me, so that's good. I am getting massive warnings about frames being dropped from Twitch. I have no idea where that's coming from. But we'll try to muddle through, so um, hopefully people can... Audio and video is just fine. Good, okay. So then it's just me that's not seeing it. All right. Cluster W, right? So um, we did our alignment. The second question is, yeah, so see, I think something went wrong when I tried to switch from Firefox to Notepad. So the question is how many um, amino acids in the sequence are identical? So for cluster W, we know that a star means an identical sequence. Um, so when we go to Notepad++, we can just say, uh, find uh, the, the stars, right? And then just count them. Um, so if I count the stars, then I see that there are three stars. So across all of the sequences that we have, there are only three amino acids which are shared exactly between all of the sequences. And here you can already see that something kind of went wrong, right? These sequences are too distantly related for us to start aligning them. Um, yeah, because you can see that there are m large stretches where all of the sequences are different. Um, so this alignment is not a, a perfect alignment, um, it, or it's a far from perfect alignment, so to speak. All right, so the next question is, how many amino acids are highly conserved between all sequences? So those are the double points. So let me select one and then just count them. So those are 20, right? So there are three amino acids between these uh, five sequences, which are identical. And then there are 20, which are um, highly conserved. And of course, that's that's very low, um, especially considering the fact that if we look at the length of the sequences in Firefox, right? So if we go to the alignment and we see that that's like 250 amino acids and the longest one is 326, right? So here we have one of these pitfalls from multiple sequence alignment, right? We just take sequences, we throw them in cluster W, cluster W will do its best to align it, but it won't give us a, a message saying, you know what, these sequences are too 
distant really related or these sequences are not related to each other right because only 10 percent of the whole amino acid sequence is shared um, or is, is conserved between these and in only one percent of the whole sequence is identical so these these sequences are way way too far apart um, for us to align them or to be supposed to align them all right, so um, now change the parameters one by one, put one extremely low and high value, see how it affects the alignment. Um, can you find parameters at which the alignment is nonsense? So in theory, you would say, well, we already started with the alignment and the alignment that we did using the default parameters already seemed to be a very nonsensical alignment. All right, so let me go back. So here we can just go back and we can change all of the parameters um, have for example we can say gap open penalty um, normally you get penalized by a score of 10 but we can say penalized by like a hundred right and then when we execute the multiple alignment um, head then we see that we get an alignment again but now the alignment is more or less gapless right because now it is so expensive to open up a gap that cluster W will more or less want to put the alignments at the beginning Right, because now opening a gap inside of the sequence will give you a penalty of 100. Um, so the algorithm will not open. Um, it will would rather, in this case, try and do more or less a global alignment instead of a local alignment. Um, yeah, so to kind of just align the sequences to each other. And of course, you can change all of the parameters one by one. Hey, you can also say, well, use a different matrix right so you can use for example the PEM matrix um, and then gap open penalty actually went back to the default um, so if we use the PUM matrix then we see that the results again are slightly different I think it still uses the um, updated one um, but what you can see is that Ted like these sequences are very very distantly related from each other and the conclusion here is is that we probably were not allowed to align them um, to begin with all right, so then the next question. Download the myostatin gene, DNA and protein sequence from ensemble for a human, gorilla, mouse, chicken, and a species of your own interest. So I hope that actually people were um, um, able to do that. Um, let me see if I actually saved the sequences or that we have to download them again. No, and uh, let me see. No, so I haven't saved them to my hard drive, but that, that's okay. So we can just go into Ensemble. Um, so let's go to Ensemble, and then we want it first human. So we are just going to say human, and then we are just going to say myostatin, right? And just get the protein and DNA sequences. So MSDN is the gene. And Ensemble is again a little bit slow today, but it at least doing something um, we're just going to export the data from the main page we're going to say give me a FASTA sequence give me the uh, feature strand that's okay because we don't care um, I want to have the unmasked you could go for the mask sequence as well I want to have the um, cDNA right so the, 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 the well let's go for the coding sequence I want to have the peptide sequence I don't care about the introns or the exons um, so don't give me those do next and then give me a text file right so now here it gives me the DNA sequence and then it gives me the peptide which is the uh, peptide that uh, the myostatin gene so let's just take the first two right here we get the, um, the, the genomic sequence and of course the genomic sequence is way way longer because it also contains the introns um, so that's a little bit of a shame but um, we don't need that one. So we're just going to take the coding sequence, right? So the, the part of the gene after it's been transcribed into RNA, after all of the introns have been removed. Um, so we're just going to take this and then go and put this in Notepad++. Um, so let me open up a new file. And that's the first one. And I'm going to... Oh, show you guys and I'm actually going to rename this right so I'm just going to say human um, MSTN DNA and I'm going to do the same thing here and now I'm going to say uh, protein just to make sure so that's the human one um, let's do the next one um, so the next one was not human but it was mouse 
So let's go to mouse. Um, let me show you guys what I'm doing. So again, going just to mouse, so I selected mouse, I search for MSTN, new statin, and I press go. Um, just take it from the reference strain. And then it needs to load a little bit. I'm saying export data. And again, I want to have FASTA sequences. I just want to have the coding sequence and the peptide sequence, which is selected. I just press next, give it in text format, and then I take the first one, right? And here you can see actually that there's something interesting going on in mice. Mice actually have multiple versions of myostatine. And this is because a mouse um, or the mouse myostatin gene um, does multiple or produces multiple different proteins from the same uh, sequence. Um, yeah, so you can see that this one is relatively long, um, but it also produces a shorter myostatin gene. Um, so there's two different different proteins being produced from this one. Um, but take take the longer one, right? Because we want to compare it to humans. Um, so we, we want to take the one which has more or less the same. Um, then we go to Notepad++ and we just add this. Um, so we just say this is mouse. Um, MSTN and this is DNA. Let's copy this and let's paste this and then we say this is the protein sequence. Alright, then next one would have been Gorilla, I think. So let's go back. Let's just go to the home page. Then we need to select a species which is Gorilla. And then we search Gorilla, which is actually I always love the Latin name for Gorilla, which is Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. Um, so it's just funny. Like mouse is most musculous, but gorillas, they have the best one. Like we are homo sapiens, um, but I don't know why we're not like sapiens, sapiens, sapiens or something. Like gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. Anyway, MSTN. Next gene, MSTN um, from the Western Lowland gorilla. We just click on it and we have to wait a little bit for ensemble to load. A little bit longer. Oh. If we have this much waiting time, we could have just used Biomart, I think, in R, which would have been quicker. Um, but um, just say export data. It should have selected what I wanted. And I'm just going to press next and then say for the gorilla, give me the text file as well, which again takes time. Um, so here actually we can see that gorillas, just like humans, only encode one protein from their myostatin gene. Um, so let's copy this and also put this one in Notepad++. Let's go here, enter, plop. And then this one is a gorilla um, MSTN DNA, right? And then we have gorilla protein. Protein. All right. So then, which one was the next one? So the next one was human, gorilla, mouse, pig. All right. So pig. Go to Firefox. Um, go back. Go to ensemble. Um, pig breeds. Just go to pig. Um, which pig do we want? Which pig do we want? Anyone got a favorite pig? They don't have the Göttinger mini pig, actually. That would be interesting. But uh, let's just take the Hampshire pig. That's kind of a, a standard pig, right? Um, not wanting to view an example location. Can I not just search for pig? Yes. So I'm just going to change it here to pig and going to say MSDN. All right. Um, let's get the reference genome instead of the first one, which is a certain breed of pigs. I actually don't know what the reference is for the pig, but uh, we shall see. All right, so we export the data. Um, we just say, okay, give me everything that we wanted. Again, the same thing. So just a gene sequence, then go to text and then take the first one. Again, pigs like humans and gorillas only encode one. Um, I'm just going to, again, put this in Notepad++. So I'm going to say 
pig msdn and um, this is dna and then i am going to say here protein all right very good so then there's one left let me see which one is left um chicken 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 all right um go back to ensemble say msdn and I want to search this in chickens. Chicken. All right, there we go. Go. All right, so here you can see. Oh, you can't see that. But here you can see that actually um, MSDN is still called GDF8. We, we talked about this last week um, that pet genes have multiple names. Um, and in chicken, actually, they did not rename the myostatin gene to a, a, because the gene symbol is still the old gene symbol. So GDF8. Um, again, we say export data. And then we say next. And we want to have the text FASTA. And we take the first one. So interestingly enough, chickens also encode myostatin like uh, humans, gorillas, and pigs. All right, so we go to Notepad++. Um, we say chicken, um, MSTN, and this is pro uh, DNA. Sorry. And then we copy this and we just rename this one and then we say protein. Good, so now we got all of our sequences. I'm just going to save this file for later use um, because I'm going to use it again. So these are protein sequences.fasta. Um, I'm not allowed to save there. That's okay. Save it to my OneDrive. All right, so now I have my file with protein and DNA sequences. Um, so let's see what the um, assignment is. So using Clustal W, analyze the overlap in DNA sequence similarities between these six species. So question to you guys in chat. Um, do we want to use R or do we just want to use the, the online tool? Um, so there's only four people watching, so the first one to shout um, gets his will or gets his way. So just do it using Firefox or do we want to write a small R script which does this? I, I'm, I'm just going to use R. I like R a lot more. So see, that's what I thought. Xanaxin, we do R. Good. All right. So first things first, I need to figure out where I save my file, but just start a new file, right? So I'm going to set my working directory to where I save the protein file, which turns out to be C double punt users slash Arons, I think. Yeah, that's correct. All right, then let me show you guys the R window as well. And let's set our working directory there. And then we're just going to um, load in our file, right? So we're just going to say um, read lines um, because, yeah, why not? Just use read lines, um, go to Notepad++, right? Because we just want to load in the whole file. The file was called protein um, sequences.fasta. And then this is content or some other variable name, right? Um, let me save this actually as a script dot R um, so that we get nice code highlighting. Let's call it script two dot R. And let me see what happens, right? So now if we look at F content, it gives me a warning that there's no enter. Oh, um, it gives me a warning that there's no enter at the end of the file, which is true. Um, but this is kind of what we have. So these, this is just the content from the file, 140 lines in total. And we see that we have the descriptions as well. So the first thing that we need to do is, of course, we need to split this file um, because we need to figure out. So first question was, do the DNA alignment, right? So we want to have the DNA, right? So when it says DNA in the string, then we want to get all of the DNA codes up until the next one. So the first thing that we have to figure out is where do the sequences start and end, right? And start of a sequence is denoted by this larger than symbol, then the next line will be the sequence. 
All right, so how do we do this? Um, so in R, when we go to Notepad++, we want to figure this out, right? Um, so I'm just going to say grep um, and then grep this larger than symbol in F content. Right, so grep is something that allows you to search in, uh, in files. Um, and when I do this, then it tells me that the first line has a greater than symbol, line number 21, 29, 24, uh, 49, and so forth. Right, so I'm just using the grep to see if there's this greater than symbol, because I know when I see this greater than symbol, the next sequence will start. So I know now that the first from, from line one up until line 20, there is a sequence that I want to use. Um, so that's good. So let me store that somewhere. So, um, so sec start, right, or sec s, um, let's give good variable names. So these is where sequences start, right? And then of course, um, sequences end, um, it, that's just where the sequences start, um, minus one, right? Because the, the end of the sequence is where they are. Um, so let me see if this works. So let's just go and go back to R, copy paste in the little piece of code that we made. So sequences start at these positions, sequences end at these positions. And now we see we have a little issue because the first sequence of course goes from one to 20 and the second one goes from 21 to 28. And the problem here is, is that the last one is, is not ending at 133, but the last one is actually ending at 140. So I need to adjust my sec end thing, right? I need to drop the first one because that doesn't make sense. And then I need to add the last one, which is just the number of rows or the number of lines that I read into the file. Um, so let's do that, right? So we're just going to say, okay, sec end is sec end. Um, I'm going to drop the first one, so minus one. So that drops the zero from the from the line that we have. And then I'm going to say sec end is um, combine sec end, right? Um, with the number or uh, the length of F content, right? Because th that's our file content. All right, so now when I would look at this, then I, oh, that's the wrong one. Let's go back to R. So now when I look at this, then I now have sec start right, start positions, sec end should have the end positions. And now I can uh, do, for example, a C bind for this um, to combine these two together. So I say sec start, uh, comma, sec end, right? And now I get a little matrix, right? So now it tells me that the first sequence starts at one, ends at 20. The second sequence starts at 21, ends at 28. All right, so that's nice, but now I still need to figure out which sequences they were, right? So fortunately, I actually, like the first line, so where the sequence start is the annotation. Um, so I can just say F content. So, oh, let me go back to Notepad++ since we're writing a little script. Um, so I can say F content um, at the position um, sec start, right? Then this would give me the names of the different sequences. Oh, wrong button again. So this would give me the names of the sequences. So these are the, the names. So I'm just going to use this C bind to make a little matrix. So let's use a little matrix. Um, so my sex or now my um, sequence plus, right? My sequence positions. And then I'm just going to use this as the names. So I'm just going to say row names of my sequence uh, plus plus is this, right? So now in theory, I should end up with a little matrix, which has the names on the on the rows. So M sec pos. Um, so here, here we see the names and then we see where the sequence starts and the sequence ends. And now of course I need to add one to where my sequence start because the DNA sequence for human myostatin does not start at one, it actually starts at two. And R makes this really easy for us um, because I can just say, okay, so now I do M sec pos, right? Um, take the first column and say plus one and then add this back into the first column. So I'm just going to say M sec pos one is like this. All right, so now everything should be okay. So now I should have my little information file, um, which will tell me where each sequence starts and where each sequence ends. So my sec pos. And now this should be okay.
Right, so the human DNA sequence for myostatin starts at line number 2, ends at line number 20. The protein sequence 22 to 28. Alright, so now next thing is to kind of get the sequences right, so I'm just going to first add an empty column to my matrix, right, because um, I, I want to have a column where I can store the sequence. Um, so I'm going to say m sec pos, right, um, is m sec pos, and I'm going to column bind, so I'm going to say find a column and I'm just going to say uh, column is called sequence and initially I don't know what the sequence is so I'm just going to fill it with a missing value. So when I do this and I do this in R um, then it looks like this and it now just has an empty column for the sequence that we're going to add. Alright so now let's extract the sequences so we are going to just extract the sequences so we're going to say 4x in 1 2 the number of rows of this msec post thing, right, which is my annotation file. Well, what do I want to do? Well, I want to get the, um, the start and the end position, right, so I want to get all of the lines out. So I'm just going to say for um, line in um, msec post, right, so x comma 1, which is the start position. Um, I could have used the uh, sec start, so let's just say I want to have from column sequence start right and I want to go to the sequence end so that's how we do it right so now I have a second for loop so X is the current information line that we're looking at and then line here or let's just call it L the variable so L means which lines am I going to do so I'm just going to build up my sequence, so I'm going to say initially I have a sequence which is empty, right, so there's nothing in there, um, let's just call it sec, uh, let's call it secu, um, and then the only thing that I have to do is now take the line out of the file, right, so I'm just going to say file content, um, give me line L, and then um, add that, so paste zero, the sequence that we already had with the file content of line L. Um, and then let's cut the secu and um, put a new line behind it, right, just to make sure. And now, of course, in the end, let me first run this for you guys so that you can, guys can see what happens. Um, so it will just print the sequences that we have. And, of course, these sequences will be relatively long, especially the DNA sequences. Um, the, the protein sequences kind of look very similar in length. Um, that's how you build it up, right? And we're writing a script which is generic, so we can use it later on. Um, so, good. So, um, let me go back to Notepad for you guys. So, of course, we have to store this secu variable now into my secpos. So, I'm going to say that msecpos line x or row number x at the column sequence, um, just put this thing in, right? So that we remember it. Um, for later and I'm going to disable printing to screen um, because I don't want that. Alright, so let's run it, right, and then when we look at msec pos, then it now looks like this, right, so we have the start position, the end position, and then the sequence. Good! But now we have DNA and protein sequences, but again we can use the grep trick, right, so we can, oh, sorry, you're not looking at the wrong. So now it looks like this, right, so we have the start, end, and the sequence, um, and now we can use this little grep trick again to say, well, I only want to have the lines which start with the name or which have DNA in their name, or I want to have protein. Right, so let's use this little trick. Um, so I'm going to say grep DNA, comma, row names of msec pos. So these are my DNA sequences, right? So this should tell me that one... 3, 5 are the DNA sequences, um, so should be okay, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and the same thing holds for protein. So let's um, actually do a, so now we can make our vector, right, so we can make our vector which now contains the DNA strengths, so I'm just going to say, well, from msecpos, right, take these entries at give me the sequence, right, so this is just going to give me a vector, um, oh, it's the wrong button. So this is just going to give me a vector with all of the DNA sequences in there. And of course I now have to put the names on there, 
because I want to remember that it was a gorilla or a human or these kinds of things. Um, so these are, if we go back to Notepad, so I'm just going to say these are my DNA sec. Right, and then I'm going to give them names and I'm going to use the same trick. So I'm going to say um, names of DNA sequences are the row names of msec pos and then at these positions. Those are the positions that I just did. Alright, so if I would do this in R, then now if I would look at DNA sec, it would look like this. So I have DNA sequences and somewhere in the back it will tell you human myostatin is the name for the first sequence, mouse myostatin, second sequence, and so on. Alright, so now what we know is that we now can start multiple alignment. Right, so when we do multiple alignment we need library MSA and then we need to make a DNA string string set out of my sequences. Right, so DNA sec and then we have a DNA string set so DNA SS or something like that so let me run that see if everything goes okay alright so it's loading all of the required packages and now I can make a DNA string set so now when I look at DNA SS it will tell me that we have a DNA string set we have a length of 5 um, here we see the length of the sequences themselves sequences and then the names and now we can start aligning. So the next step would be is now to do a multiple sequence alignment. So we say MSA of our uh, DNA SS and then this is my alignment. All right, so go back and do the alignment. And then it says using the default substitution matrix and now we can see that the alignment is done. Right, so it's, you see that it inserts some a little gap right because here you see ATG so it aligns all of the ATGs and in mouse for example we have two ATGs at the beginning and here we actually have an ATC ATG for gorilla um, and now have already it sorted it kind of to the to the um, to the sequence uh, we can also see that it actually comes up with a consensus sequence good so now I forgot how the second R trick works so that we can cluster them um, so I'm just going to look that up from the previous slide so that will take me a little bit of time so I'm going to say documents and um, I want to see my PPTX I want to see bioinformatics 2021 and I want to see my old lecture Right, so let's go to the old lecture then the, the trick for doing this is all the way at the end so make an uh, yeah so now I have to do library second R so let me show you guys what I'm doing so I'm just taking the code from the lecture right so I need to load the library second R and then I need to convert the alignment that I did from an MSA alignment to um, this is called all, oh, uh, this is called alignment um, so I have to convert it to a second R alignment so um, I'm just going to overwrite the alignment file um, then I want to cluster it based on the similarity which is also code from the previous lecture so I'm just going to copy paste this in um, so that I don't have to write it so make a distance matrix and then I want to do a clustering and a plot so again just copy pasting the code from the slide that we showed last time because I, I don't know this from my mind um, so have once you've written the code then just reuse the code. Alright so this is the first thing um, so let's just see how the clustering looks like right so see which sequences are most related to each other. Um, so have we load um, so have we make our alignment using the MSA library um, then we use second R to get the similarities so here we want to cluster by similarity and then when we plot the clustering it actually looks like this so it tells us that the human myostatin DNA sequence is most similar to gorilla we see that pig is the closest towards the, uh, humans and gorillas then mouse and then chickens are furthest away so they are most dissimilar um, if we want to make this look a little bit better um, then we can say plot clustering and then we can say hang is minus one um, and then it will actually like pull all of the lines down right because um, what it does it tries to infer like when or biological age and stuff but we don't want that we just want to have everything on the same line 
Um, if we want to make it look a little bit better, then we could have done that as well. Um, and then we need to use the Ape library. So let's just do that as well, because I, I do like it to be a little bit better, right? Because normally when you do these phylogenetic trees, you want to have them show in a horizontal way instead of the way that we're looking at it now. Um, so let's go back to Notepad++. We are going to use the library Ape. We are going to transform our clustering into a dendrogram. Then we are going to use the phylogenetic tree, right? So we're just going to convert it um, to a phylogenetic tree. And then we are going to plot the phylogenetic tree. Actually, we don't need to have this dendrogram call at all. Right, so now to clean up code, right? Because um, let me actually show you guys how this looks. Right, so now I'm, instead of using a standard dendrogram, I'm just going to make a nice like a radial plot, um, which looks like this, uh, and I can have different types. Um, so let me actually look, plot.phylo. Um, we can use type is cladogram, right? So we can also use a cladogram if we wanted to, right? Then um, this is normally how you would show stuff in a paper. Right, so we see that gorillas and humans are closest related, but it doesn't change the tree at all um, because of the fact that, but it's just different visualization. Um, we can also show it as a fan if we wanted to, apparently. I'm just looking through the help file, which options you have. So this is a fan, which kind of makes it a nice circle. Um, and then we have uh, unrooted as well. Uh, which shows it as an unrooted tree, which is more or less similar to the um, radial plot that we saw before. So in this case, probably the cladogram is the best way of showing it. Um, and then this is the way that we do it for DNA sequences. So let's go back to the code, clean up the code a little bit, right? Because like it's nice code. So um, the first thing that I always do is like we use three different libraries, right? So I'm going to like move the libraries all the way up. Right, so I'm going to load. Oh, I'm going to load the libraries very, very first time. Right, so say I need MSA, I need second R, and I need a library called APE. Right, and this is just for anyone using your code. They can directly look at your file and see. Oh, I need to install three libraries, and these are the three libraries. If they are at line number twenty, then of course they have to scan through the whole code to figure out which libraries they need to install. Right, so I can also add a little bit of text. So use R to do multiple sequence alignment on um, DNA and protein sequences, right? Because we also want to do the protein sequences. Good, so now we have to add some comments, right? So um, first thing is uh, set VD and load the file. Um, then here, um, figure out where sequences start and end. Right, then here make a matrix, two columns, start and end, um, then move start column to one line below the annotation, because that's just the way that our FASTA file works. Here we uh, create, oh, um, add column three, for um, holding the sequence, right? Go through the matrix we created, create it, and um, get the sequences from the file. All right, and then here we do first step. So this is um, step one. Uh, figure or um, take the DNA sequences and align them use APE to make a what did we want to make we wanted to make a cladogram in this case all right um, so here we have the names then this is the alignment alignment um, here we have clustering and distances, and then 
APE to make a cladogram, right? And then update it to the cladogram because that just looks nicer. All right, so that's the way that we do it, right? Little script, 50 lines of code. Um, well, not just code, but we also have the uh, alignment. Damn, I'm bad at typing today. Align, it's still not correct. Alignment, all right, that's how we write it. Good, but that's how we build up this file, right? And the, the main thing here is add the comments. Because if, if you don't add the comments, then no one knows what's going on, right? And now people can kind of follow. And I'm, I'm recording this, so in theory I could show people the recording. Um, but, yeah, and of course I want to add my name to it as well. Um, and then I'm going to say this is lecture 11, or at least answers to lecture. All right. And now, of course, if we want to do a little trick, we can actually here, instead of grepping for DNA, we can also grep for um, protein. And then we could do the protein alignment. But, and this is how you build up a little script. This is how you do the analysis. Um, and I could actually take this one out, right? Um, because I can say um, rows with, um, with selection, right? Put it in a variable and then say rows with selection here and then here I also can do this right just reusing the variable and now I can say protein and I could do a C and then do the whole thing again so every oh, um, so remember the cladogram right this is based on the DNA and now we can just run the whole code again um, and then it comes up with an error Ah, right, because I'm making a DNA string set from an amino uh, from amino acids, right? So in this case, I want to say AA string set. So if I go here, right, then now I also need to update this line of code and say AA string set, and then it would do the alignment for the amino acids, and then we see that we get more or less the same cladogram. Um, let me show you guys. Right, if we run the code now, it it I just changed amino acid string set um, and here the amino acid string set now fixes the error and then we get the protein alignment. So that's how you do it. It's just like going one by one just saying okay so I want to do this and you do it and of course this is relatively advanced right you, you need to know things like the grep function, the row names function, you have to have an an idea where you want to go and of course that's really hard when you're starting out programming. Um, and this took me a couple of years actually to kind of build this up like this, right? And you can still see that I don't know any everything from from my mind because I had like the whole thing for um, this part, I just copy pasted from the slide because I could have figured it out, but then I have to go through the help files and I already did that like four or five years ago when I was designing the course. Um, so that's how we do it. All right, so what were the questions? Um, analyze the overlap in DNA sequence similarity and you can overlap protein sequence similarity as well. And of course you can just do that by um, when we go to um, R, hey, if we want to, um, well, DNA sec is now wrong because we're looking at the amino acids, um, but here we can see the different uh, sequences and if I would just do the alignment, right, and I would look at the alignment then the alignment would tell me also the consensus sequence. So by then looking at the consensus sequence, I could figure out how many amino acids are identical between the sequences, um, how many are more or less highly conserved, and these kinds of things. Right, so it's, it's, it's just building up this little phylogenetic tree. Um, and then we can learn something about evolution. So we can see that humans are indeed related to monkeys and pigs are related to humans relatively closely as well, right? But you can see that hey, humans and gorillas had a common ancestor and the common ancestor between humans and pigs, at least when it relates to the myostatin protein, is further back, right? And mice are even further back in time and the common ancestor between chickens and all of these um, other species is even further back. And that's what we learned from it, right? And this is how you do phylogenetic analysis or how you do sequence analysis. 
Good. So I've been talking for almost an hour. Um, let me go back to the presentation for you guys. So I think that were all the solutions. Um, if there's any more like questions, then um, feel free to ask. Um, of course, you can also put it down in the comments or just throw it in the chat. All right, then I will switch to the overview slide and then we will do a quick break. Um, I will be back in around 10 minutes and then we will start with the lecture. So I will see you guys in around 10 minutes, which means 2.05.